Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Grace Center. Welcome to Resurrection Sunday, where we remember Jesus risen from the dead, alive forevermore. It's a good day. <laughs> Would you guys stand with me? We're going to get going with worship here. We have some people being baptized this morning. That's going to happen during worship. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do one song of worship now. And then we have about 30 people being baptized. We have two baptismal tanks. So that's going to happen during worship as well, um, after the first song. But what a beautiful picture of what Jesus did to be able to baptize people today. I love baptisms. It's so awesome. So uh, I'm going to pray, and then we'll get going this morning. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day, Lord. This is the most significant day. where you accomplished a victory, Lord, where you won. You defeated the ultimate enemy. Death, sin. Thank you, Lord, that you are alive, that you are risen. That you can never die, that you are alive from the dead and seated at the right hand of God. And I pray for the, the revelation of the risen Christ to be here this morning. Would you fill this time? Would you bless this morning? In Jesus' name.
We worship you, Jesus. We give you all the glory and all the praise. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Yeah, amen. Okay, we're, we're taking a little break. We, we have some people being baptized this morning. Uh, people are being baptized for all different reasons. Some, some for salvation, some for rededication, some for just entering a new season with God. Matt spoke about baptism a couple weeks ago. He talked about that. So we're going to let people introduce themselves, and then we're going to go back into worship, um, and we're going to baptize people as we're worshiping. So, yeah, let's, um, let's go ahead. Can, we have, everyone's lined up against the walls. He's going to be baptized, and we have two tanks in the front. But could you guys just say your name? Let us know who you are uh, if you're being baptized this Good morning, Grace Center. Kalila, Tiffany Sander, Anna Uso, Jarista, Joshua, Joseph, Lily Driver, Ephraim Driver, Trish Mansu, Wendy. And on this side, Gabby Mezra, Coco Benjamin, Aurora, Nikki and Asa, Joy Sanders, Olive May, Shelly. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay, we're going to go back into worship. And these guys are going to, we're going to baptize these guys as we sing and worship the Lord. You guys can stand back up. <laughs> oh, yes, let me pray for you. Sorry. Thanks, man. Uh, I knew there was something I was forgetting. Okay. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this amazing day. Lord, I pray that as these wonderful people go under the water, as you were buried in death and are raised to new life as they come up from the water, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would descend upon them and rest upon them as they come up out of the water. I thank you for the children, Lord, who are being saved and brought into salvation and life today, Lord. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would fill them, Lord. Would you breathe on them? Each and every person, each and every child, each and every adult, we bless you guys in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would rest upon them and stay and remain as the dove remained on Jesus. That as they come up out of the water, the dove of your Holy Spirit would remain and never leave. We thank you for today. We thank you for what a significant moment in time this is. We thank you for heaven that's watching. Would you come, Holy Spirit?
Jesus, we declare, we say that you are worthy, God. There is no one like you. There's no one who could do what you did, Lord. Thank you for coming, God. Thank you for coming and taking on human flesh. Thank you for dying in our place, God. Thank you for rising from the dead and winning the victory that we could never win, doing what we could never do for ourselves, Lord Jesus. I pray that the revelation of your grace, your glory, your power, your beauty, your perfection, Lord, would sink into our hearts, Lord. Would you, would you reveal yourself to us? Holy Spirit, would you open our eyes to see Jesus, Lord? Would you help us to recognize him, Lord? Would you take the veil off our faces? Lord, I thank you that by your Spirit, we see you. And Holy Spirit, would you lift our eyes to the King, the Lord of all, the King of glory. Would you come, Lord? Would you speak with us? As you did after your resurrection, how you revealed yourself to people. Would you do that to us, Lord? Would you open our eyes this morning? Would you open our eyes that we wouldn't be with you and not recognize you, Lord? But that we would see you. As in your word, that you open our eyes. And would you open our eyes to see you in the scriptures? Would you open our eyes to see you by your spirit? Thank you, Lord, that you're here. Thank you that you're moving. Thank you for the amazing testimony of what happened here today, Lord. Thank you for each and every person that was baptized and raised, buried with Christ in death and raised into new life in you, Lord. We thank you, thank you, thank you, and we celebrate that this morning. Would you keep coming, Holy Spirit? Would you keep moving? We invite you, Lord, to come in. Take your place to minister to us. To speak. To move with power. With your love. Yes, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, worship team. It was lovely. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. It's great to be with you this morning. Welcome to Grace Center. Uh, my name is Richard. I'm one of the pastors here. Um, it's good to have you. How many of you are visiting for the first time or with family? Yeah, a special welcome if you're visiting. It's great to have you with us. Um, if you're new and would like to get involved or just find out more about Grace Center, uh, there's a QR code on the screen that you can scan, and that will take you to a page where you can fill in some information, and then a pastor will reach out to you during the week. And we'd love to connect with you, get to know you, and kind of share a little bit more about what we're about and how you can get involved here or get connected. But we're going to um, provide an opportunity to bring a tithe or an offering this morning. Uh, there's a few ways that you can give. Uh, you can give online on our website. Uh, we have an app, Pushpay app, or there's also boxes at the doors if you'd like to give cash or check. Uh, we love to pray a blessing and speak a declaration over our finances as we sow into the kingdom and just believe God that, that our seed will accomplish good work for the kingdom and for his glory. So would you guys stand with me and we'll just say this declaration together. As we pray for new wells of revival, we pray for new economic wells in our cities to be created. So, Lord, we ask you for favor for our city with CEOs, government leaders, and kings, manufacturing firms that produce goods for the nations and provide new jobs for our people, technology to establish new markets, energy sources, and efficient solutions to grow as a population, laws and courts that measure with the justice and the freedom of your kingdom, civil servants that encourage entrepreneurs, media known for wisdom and truth, natural resources released, harvested, sold, and reproduced, education, books, and universities that develop godly mind molders who influence the influential, 
capital to build small businesses that provide services, arts and culture, attracting both young and old, medical community known for integrity and excellence, repentance from poverty, small thinking and envy, courage to recognize opportunities and make wealth, abundance to bless the world and the prudence to save and invest, revelation to pass on wealth to our children's children. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of our financial needs, that we may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks, guys. All right, we're going to play our announcements this week, and then Pastor Jeff will be up. Hola, Grace Center. Nosotros somos Genesis y Jackie Rivas, y estamos aquí con algunos de nuestros amigos de habla hispana de Grace Center. Hola. Siéntete libre de acercarte a cualquiera de nosotros si necesitas ayuda conectándote o si tienes alguna pregunta durante nuestros servicios de los domingos. También puedes enviarnos un texto al número que aparece en pantalla para que uno de nosotros pueda estar en contacto contigo. Este es un recordatorio que la traducción al español está disponible durante nuestros servicios de las 11 y 15 de la mañana a través de la aplicación Interactio. Si necesitas ayuda descargándola, entra a gracecenter.us barra inclinada traducción o pregunta a una persona y te podremos ayudar. Estamos muy emocionados de crecer como una familia multicultural de creyentes llenos de esperanza que crean un ambiente donde la presencia de Dios puede descansar. ¡Adiós! On Sunday, March 17th, we gathered to give our first and our best to the Lord in the First Fruits Offering. For those who would still like to give and haven't had the opportunity, this is a reminder that today is the last day. You can do so by requesting an envelope in the lobby after service or by giving online and selecting the First Fruits Fund. For more information, visit gracecenter.us slash firstfruits. As a church family, we are discovering what it looks like to enter a corporate rhythm of worship, fasting, and prayer. We invite you to join us tomorrow, April 1st, as we fast together. Our posture is not to get anything from the Lord from this, but to honor His Word and invite Him to increase our hunger for Him. In addition, we invite you to join us for Sunday night prayer and worship, beginning next weekend, April 7th at 6 p.m. in the prayer room. We're excited to dedicate time together to focus our intention on Jesus and join with the heartbeat of heaven in prayer. Hope to see you there. If you are looking for a great way to serve the greater Nashville community with your family, Consider joining us for family dinner at Rocket Town this Thursday, April 4th. Rocket Town's weekly family dinners are a place where inner city youth and their families are invited to come for a catered meal, gospel message, and a safe place to connect. This is a beautiful way to love, honor, and serve this generation. If you are interested in more information or to sign up, visit gracecenter.us slash events. There's nothing like experiencing the transformative power of Jesus' words. Join us for our next Wednesday night discipleship class beginning April 10th as we spend six weeks diving into Jesus' words in Matthew 5, the beginning of his Sermon on the Mount. Class will run from 7 to 8.30 p.m. and the cafe will be open an hour beforehand for those who would like to connect with others. Children's ministry will also be available with pre-registration. So head over to gracecenter.us slash events to save your spot. We're so excited to glean from the word together. Thanks for joining us this morning. For more information on what's happening at Grace Center, visit gracecenter.us slash events. Have a great week. Good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. And, uh, ah. Was that amazing? Yes. I was sitting there thinking like, oh, heaven is marking people yes. this morning that, whew. So, um, I, we have a full house and uh, we have more than a full house because it's family Sunday. And so our children are in with us and all of that. And so I realized, we realized that could be hard for some of the little ones and we get it and you, you may not know this, and this is not, we're not trying to push you out, but there is an overflow room uh, down the hall to the left that is set up, it's streamed, and so if the children are having a hard time and, 
you know, I'm just letting you know that's available. Um, so because the children are here, I, 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 I don't want to take too long. Normally we'd go till, you know, 1.30. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to condense the message this morning. And um, uh, we always do this. So I'm, I was going to skip the part where you just reach over and say hello to one another. But we can't do that. So, <laughs> so would you just take a second just to, if you would stand up. Greet the person around you, and then we'll get started. I'm a, let's take a one minute, one minute, 60 seconds. Take about another 20 seconds. Pull back in. You guys look really good. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so I, I want to, let me say this from the onset. So I'm doing something a little different today, and I apologize. Because um, I normally have my computer up here, and you're able to sit there and just kind of go along and watch the, the screen, and I have the, the verses pulled up, and uh, I'm not doing that today. It, I know, right? We're going back in the ice ages. So, um, but I do want to say this. You are, want, you are going to want to follow me this morning. You're going to want to follow me in the Bible. So, if you didn't bring your Bible, if you have your phone or whatever, you want to pull that out because go we're going to be going back and forth. I've been listening and, 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 and reading some material from a guy by the name of Daryl Johnson and um, uh, fabulous, uh, uh, this, it, fabulous guy. So anyway, uh, I, this message today is actually, I, I'm taking some of his material and at first I was a little reluctant to do that. I was like, yeah, you know, but I don't care about credit because the message is so strong. This is, this is a really strong message. So I'm going to read a, a lot of scripture. So if you have your turn to Isaiah 6, and you're going to want to keep that. And then we're going to read Revelation 4, and I'm going to read Revelation, all of Revelation 4 and 5. Okay? And, I'm, and I promise you, I'm going to get you out of here before 1.30. I am reading from the New Living Translation. It doesn't matter which translation you're reading, whatever your preference is, read from that. It's all good. Okay? Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for today. We ask, Lord, that Jesus would be real, that you would open our eyes, and that he would be glorified, and that we would enter in into worship. Let me just say this. <clears throat> um, the thing about today, we started our service today at nine o'clock. And one of the things that I want to say 
up, up front is that worship didn't start with us, nor will it end with us. So, um, so we started at nine o'clock. There are people, practically speaking, that are on the Eastern time zone that they've already been doing this. And if you go out further and further time zones, practically speaking, worship has already started. Now, spiritually speaking, worship has been going on before we were born. And so, um, so there are two, uh, two people that have recorded worship. One is Isaiah in 740 BC. The other is the Apostle John in Revelation 4 and 5, somewhere around 92 or 95 AD. And so we're going to read these accounts. These are pictures or videos, if you would, of what is happening right now in worship in heaven. Amen. So we're going to start with Isaiah. It was in the year King Uzziah died, which is at 740 BC, that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings, they covered their face. With two wings, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. And they were calling out to each other, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations and the entire building was filled with smoke. Then I said, it's all over. I am doomed for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the king, the Lord of heaven's armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. And he touched my lips with it and said, see, this coal has touched your lips now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord asking, whom shall I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, here I am, send me. Revelation 4. Then I looked, I saw a door standing open in heaven and the same voice I had heard before spoke to me like a trumpet blast the, Lord, uh, the voice said, come up here and I will show you what must happen after this. And instantly I was in the spirit and I saw a throne in heaven and someone sitting on it. The one sitting on the throne was as brilliant as gemstones, like Jasper and Carnelian. And the glow of an emerald circled his throne like a rainbow. 24 thrones surrounded him and 24 elders sat on them. They were all clothed in white and had gold crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumble of thunder. And in front of the throne were seven torches with burning flames. This is the sevenfold spirit of God. In front of the throne was a shiny sea of glass sparkling like crystal. In the center and around the throne were four living beings each covered with eyes, front and back. The first of these living beings was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a human face. And the fourth was like an eagle in flight. Each of these living beings had six wings. And their wings were covered all over with eyes inside and out. Day after day and night after night, they keep on saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, the one who always was, who is, and who is still to come. Whenever the living beings give glory and honor and thanks to the one sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down and worship the one sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever. And they lay their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy, O Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and they exist because you created what you pleased. 
Then I saw a scroll in the right hand of the one who was sitting on the throne. There was writing on the inside and the outside of the scroll, and it was sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel who shouted with a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals on the scroll and open it? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll and read it. Then I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and read it. But one of the 24 elders said to me, stop weeping. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne, has won the victory. He is worthy to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb that looked as if it had been slaughtered. But it was now standing between the throne and the four living beings and among the 24 elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which represent the sevenfold spirit of God that is sent out into every part of the earth. He stepped forward and took the scroll from the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. And when he took the scroll, the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp, and they held gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song with these words, You are worthy to take the scroll and to break its seals and open it. For you were slaughtered, and your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have caused them to become a kingdom of priests for our God and they will reign on the earth. And then I looked again, and I heard the voices of thousands and millions of angels around the throne and of the living beings and the elders, and they sang in a mighty chorus, worthy is the lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And then I heard every creature in heaven And on earth and under the earth and in the sea, they sang blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. And the four living beings said, amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped the lamb. You are dismissed. (laughs) I want to, when I've read this before, it reads as two separate worship scenes. And you see one in Isaiah 6, and then there's another snapshot in Isaiah, or in Revelation 4 and 5. But I want to present to us that this is the same worship scene that started in 740. BC with Isaiah, and by the time it got to AD 92, 95, somewhere in there, I don't, something had changed. It's the same worship scene. And I want us to look at the, the, what has changed. Something has changed. And so before we even get into that, I, I'm going to do this by unpacking, uh, I'm just going to use two questions. What is the same with the two, and what is the difference with the two? So, with the same, so this is where we're going to go back and forth with Isaiah 6 and Revelation 4. With the, the, what is the same is number one, Isaiah 6. Isaiah says, it was in the year that King Uzziah died, that I saw the Lord, he was sitting on a throne. Revelation 4, verse 2. Instantly I was in the spirit and I saw a throne. So the throne is the same. The next thing is there's someone sitting on the throne. Isaiah 6, I saw the Lord seated on the throne. Revelation 4, John says, 
I saw a throne. Behold, someone was sitting on it. The fact that someone is sitting on a throne, the headquarters of the universe, is really good news. I don't have enough time to unpack this, but when Isaiah penned this in 740 BC, just in China, they've gone through 10 dynasty changes. There have been regimes that have been built up and have fallen. There are empires that have been built up and have fallen. And throughout the course of history, there's one throne that has remained the same. Can I just tell you, there is no coup attempt on this throne. It will never be overthrown. This throne will never be overthrown. The same, Isaiah 6. They're saying, holy, holy, holy. Revelation 4. Holy, holy, holy. The emphasis on holy, holy, holy. Three times there's an emphasis. It's, it, it, it's not just, it's beauty. It, it is purity. It is holiness. It is splendor. It is brightness. It is magnificent. It is, but the, the reason they're saying three times is because it's completely other than. Everything from the archangel to the ant has been created. He's the only one that stands alone, completely uncreated. So that's the same. The same in Isaiah 6. There are seraphim with six wings. In Revelation 4, there are living beings with six wings, the same. Day and night, night and day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, century after century, they never cease saying, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God. Holy. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Holy, holy, holy. So, the same. Two pictures. 740 BC, 95 AD. There's a throne. There's someone sitting on it. Beautiful beyond description. Attending the throne are living creatures saying, holy, holy, holy. But the revelation picture has something different. Something has changed between 740 and 95 A.D. What has changed? So, what are the difference? In Revelation 4, if you look, there's 24 other thrones that are surrounding this throne. Are these rival thrones? Are they in competition with this throne? No. The one throne is a capital T throne. The 24 thrones that are surrounding it are lowercase thrones. What has happened? The living God has chosen these thrones to surround him. He has chosen to bring others into his governing of the universe. 24, 2 times 12. 2 times 12. 12 refers to the redeemed people of God. There's 12 redeemed people. 
before Jesus' death and resurrection, and there's 12 people after Jesus' death and resurrection. It's the fulfillment of Jesus' words when he told his disciples, you will sit on thrones and reign with me. The, the big T, capital T throne, cannot be overturned. The lowercase thrones cannot be overturned. What else is different? Those attending the throne, they're acting differently. In 740 BC, their seraphim with their six wings, they cover. With two, they cover. They cover their faces. They cover their eyes. Why? Because of the beauty and the splendor and, 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 and the undescribable amount of glory and holiness that they're seeing. They can't handle it. Isaiah says, woe is me, or I am doomed. I have seen, I am doomed. In Revelation 4, there are four living creatures with six wings. There's no mention of covering. There's no mention of covering their faces. There's no mention of covering their eyes. Instead, it's creatures full of eyes. Front and back. In 740 BC, they covered their eyes. In 95 AD, they're full of eyes. Why? Something must have happened for the creatures to behold holiness. Something must have happened to allow creatures to stand in the presence of holiness and not be undone. What happened? Revelation 5, 6. Then I saw a lamb that looked as if it had been slaughtered. Let me tell you something. So there are two Greek words for lamb. One is John the Baptist said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The Greek word is lamb, which is referring to an adult sheep. This word, arnion, is a baby lamb. A small lamb. Then I saw a lamb that looked as if it had been slaughtered, but it was now standing between the throne. The actual translation is in the middle of the throne, in the middle, not to the side, not to the back, in the middle. The lamb was standing in the middle, 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 in the middle of everything that's going on, in the middle, in the middle. He's a part of it, in the middle. The lamb has been slain. That's what's happened. That's what's happened. The lamb of God has been slain. That's why there's 24 other thrones. The people, they represent the people who have been bought with his blood. They now have a place. That's why those attending around the throne no longer cover their eyes. Something has been done for creation that allows mere creation to stand in the awesome presence not to, and not getting nuked. It's the slain lamb. Jesus Christ, the lamb, has taken away our sin. That changes the dynamic of heavenly worship. In uh, uh, 740 BC, in, in Isaiah, the creatures hide their eyes. 95 AD, they open their eyes. They're full of eyes. There's one more difference. There's a change in human language. In, in 740 BC, Isaiah, 
Isaiah says, woe, sees, sees, stands in the presence says, woe, I am doomed, I am undone. 95 AD, Revelation 4 and 5, what they're saying, worthy, worthy, worthy are you. You made a place, you made a way for me to be here, worthy are you. They're taking in all the holiness, all of the splendor. The things that you couldn't see in 740 BC, they can see now because of the slain lamb. You made it possible for me to be here. So, worship. Does it begin with us? Does it end with us? The question when we enter into worship is not, what did I get out of this? But the question is, did I enter in? (sighs) So, today... We've been a part of worship. Where's the worship team? Huh? You don't have to. It's not 1.30 yet. But, oh. Oh. What he has done. What he's done for me. What he's done for you. There's no more punishment. There's no more separation. There's no more. There's no more shame. There's no more. Everything has been provided. You have a front row seat. seat. We can walk boldly into the throne room. Walk boldly up to the throne of grace in times of need. Boldly. Because of the lamb the lamb the sacrificial love I told them I said hey we might go back into worship I'm not sure but anyway I'm going to jump up here in the huddle real quick We're going to end, we're going to go back into one of the songs that we did. Are you guys, I'm not going to skip you, okay? I don't care. No, I'm just... Can I tell you something? If you if you are here and you don't know Jesus, there has been a way that's been paid for you. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. It's not about your performance. It's not about what you've done. It's not about what you don't do. It's all about what he has done for you. The message is so simple. All it is, all it takes is for us to believe that he did that for me as filthy and as messed up as I was, and as some people are, as we all are, as we all are, we all are, we all are. Don't let this day leave without you giving your life. Come to meet Jesus. He wants to meet you. The invitation is open. It's wide open. It's wide open. 
Every way has been paid. Every way. Every, no punishment. He's not mad at you. He's not mad at you. He took the wrath. He took the wrath that you and I deserve. Woo! Okay. Can we, can we stand up?
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you guys would like prayer for anything, the prayer team can come up right now. As Jeff was saying, his blood covers everything. It covers sickness. It covers sin. He paid the price for you. If there's anything you need, bring it to him this morning. We'd love to pray with you. If, if you're giving your life to Jesus for the first time, we would love to pray with you. Please come and line up in this aisle if you'd like prayer. And we have someone up front who'd love to pray with you. If you want to be baptized, we're doing baptisms again next service. You can jump in last minute. It's a good day. It's a good day for salvation. Jesus, thank you so much for what you did. Thank you for this morning. Would you bless each person who's here today? Thank you for being here. God bless you. We'll see you soon.